Hello and welcome back to the Digital Bird 3D printable DIY camera motion control system project. If you've been here before, you'll know what it's all about. If not, the aim has been to provide the most comprehensive, feature-rich DIY system to all you starving film producers out there uh, running on virtually no budget. The system has been developed by myself over the last couple of years. Uh, all the parts for the 3D printed parts are available on the Thingverse website for all the components. There's no soldering or programming required uh, to make the system as accessible as possible. I'm providing kits which you can obtain from the Digital Bird Shopify channel. And uh, all you really need to provide is your own 3D printed parts uh, to complete the systems. Today we're going to be talking primarily about the new PTZ Plus controller, which brings for the first time live cinematic camera moves to the system. Uh, over the years, I've been asked many times by people uh, for this kind of functionality, some people wanting to use it for music videos, uh, or even small studio setups, two, three cameras, uh, even someone from Africa who wanted to use the system for wildlife photography. Uh, up until now, the system has primarily uh, focused in on programmed moves rather than real-time moves. But the PTZ controller we have now should address, I think, most of these things for most people. Now, it doesn't replace the original compact controller. If you don't require live moves, then this is still the way to go. The fe new features on this controller have everything this one has with the addition of the PTZ or live camera move functions. With the new controller comes version 3 of the software and it has some great new features. The uh, first and foremost, I guess, is that the system now remembers all its key points so you don't lose them when you pull the plug or uh, the battery runs flat. Uh, we've upgraded for both controllers the user interface. I think it's much more intuitive now. And um, there's a new stop motion feature again on both controllers uh, for all you budding stop motion animators out there. So there's lots of new things still to come to the system. Uh, only time is the enemy. And with that, I think we should get on with having a look at some of the features here on the new uh, PTZ Plus controller. Okay, so if we take a look at the controller, first of all, we can see our now familiar next day on display which controls all the settings you're used to on the system for program mode, but also the, now, the new PTZ functions. Uh, over here we have a three axis joystick, which controls the pan on the tilt head, uh, the tilt back and forwards, and the slide left and right. Over on the left, we have a second joystick, which is for our uh, focus or zoom. In the centre, we have a now a new tactile LED um, start or record button. And over here, we have a smoothness control, which allows us to smooth out our moves by changing the, the uh, ramping or the acceleration factor on the, uh, the PTZ moves. So the layout is deliberately very simple but effective. Okay, Now, it's powered by the same NP style batteries that's used on the rest of the system and on the side we have a small rocker switch for power and also a 7.5 input jack for external power supply. If we go into our PTZ menu we can see that along the top we have three cameras options along here. This is this allows us to set up three camera systems for live action moves. And underneath this, we have up to six poses, which can be stored for each camera system that we're using. So a camera system can be any combination of the digital bird components with a camera. So over here, we have a pan tilt head on a slider, okay, with the, the focus motor or the zoom motor in this case, uh, running on the lens. Over here, we have just a pan tilt head on a tripod. And down below here, we have another camera <clears throat> on the simple pan head uh, on another slider. So each of these is a system. So this is camera one, this will be camera two, this will be camera three. To ID it, we turn on just the system we want to be ID'd as number one. 
on the right hand side here we have an ID set button. If we give that press once, and we get a splash screen telling us to turn on only the kit which is identified with camera one, the current camera set. Once we've done that, we can hit the ID and that's it done. That camera system and all its components are now slave to camera one. We turn off everything on camera one, we can do the same thing for camera two. We go in here, go to ID set, and it's telling us the same message again, but noting us that it's camera two we're setting and hit ID on that set. Same again for camera three. Okay, so now we have all three cameras set up and ready to accept commands. Now, because we're using a zoom motor on camera one here, there's one last setup procedure we have to go through and that's to set the limits for that motor. We do that by picking the F and Z or focus and zoom limits button on the next on display. That gives us a splash screen, which gives us some instructions that we should stand behind the camera and turn the lens fully in, in an anti-clockwise direction to the first stop. Press next one more time, turn the lens fully in the opposite or clockwise direction to the end stop. And one last time, press next. And we should see the lens then be returned to the first position. And that sets the focus limits uh, or zoom limits for that particular lens. Now, it's important to note that each time you turn that pan, pan tilt head on, that you remember and turn that lens to the first position uh, so that it knows where home is for that lens uh, going forward from there. Okay, so with all three systems powered on, if we go to camera one, we find we can control camera one We can zoom. And we can do all these things at the same time, nice and smoothly. If we switch to camera two, you can see it now camera two is running. And if we go to camera three, You can see also that camera three is running. So to save a pose, we can select any of our poses here, so up to six per camera system. You simply click on the pose, it turns yellow. We can then move the camera to our desired position and hit save pose. Then we can go on to another pose Move the camera to the position we want that for that pose and hit save pose again and go through each of the poses doing exactly the same thing. Once we've set our poses, we go back to camera one. We can say camera one move to pose one and the camera system will move to pose one. Move to pose two and the system moves to that pause. If we want the system to start recording, we can simply press the red button in the middle. The system will start recording. If we go onto camera two now, that camera one will continue to, to record, but camera two isn't recording. We can tell that one to start recording. And we can move on to camera three until that one start recording. And go back to camera two, turn that off, camera one, and turn that off. Another feature of the system is the ability to have one camera system running on programmed modes, either with the A to B programming or the sequencer 
six key sequence of programming, while the other cameras are still controllable through the PTZ uh, real-time functions. So to do that, what I've done is I've set this camera up is no longer camera three, it is camera zero. And we set a camera to camera zero from the home menu. At the bottom of the menu on the right hand side, you'll see ID zero. So you switch off all the other systems, just have this system switched on and ID it to zero. A system has to be in zero to, be, to use the program functions. So now that this system has been set up at zero, we also have a small button on the top of the joystick here, which is used if you watch the small red light here, when we press it, that turns red. That means that even if we're in a different room with this controller, we no longer need to manually move the system around when we set our in points and out points, but we can use the joystick here to drive it to the position required. So with that lit red, if we go to our out point on camera zero, we find that we can use our joystick now to control where that out point is. We confirm that, press the green one, camera goes back to home. What we'll do is we'll have that running on a bounce, perhaps, and we'll set up a few bounces on there. Once we've done that, we can hit play, and this camera now is running on programmed mode and bouncing back and forward. So while that continues to do that, we can go back into our PTZ mode. And if we look at camera on camera one, we still have full control in PTZ live mode on camera one. Move to camera two. And likewise, we can still control camera two with PTZ. So we can have three live cameras, but we can also have programmed automatic cameras, which are just running back and forward uh, through the same routine, either in A to B mode or in sequencer, six key sequencer mode. Okay, so we've discussed how the PTZ controller can control the camera system, but clearly we still have a problem about how to get our video signal from our cameras to our monitors here beside the system so that we can monitor what the camera is actually looking at when we control it. Now, there are lots of proprietary systems on the market out there that can do that. Uh, they are quite expensive. I think the cheapest is around £165. Um, but there is, for some camera systems at least, the alternative of using the camera's own um, system. In the case of the Sony's, it would be Image Edge. And we can use <coughs> our mobile phone uh, as a monitor or an iPad or a tablet, whatever. So I've got this uh, phone here set up with Image Edge and it's showing me what's happening on the camera. And what I normally do is just screw that into the side of here. Let's see, I'll adjust this so you can see better what's going on. So I can hit record. And we can see that the camera is recording. I can adjust. camera to look at me, slow it down a little, and we get nice smooth moves. And Image Edge is nice as well because it can actually work with multiple cameras and uh, if you have multiple camera setups on here you can select the camera that you're viewing inside the system so you can have another one set up for each of the cameras on the digital bird system. Um, so this is a, a free piece of software, if you like, that comes with Sony cameras. I'm not sure, I'm sure Nikon and Canon uh, and the other big makes do something similar, uh, possibly better than this one. Um, but it's free, you know, uh, which can't be beat. Stop recording. Okay, I'd like to talk now a little bit about the stop new stop motion function, which is available on both the compact controller and the PTZ controller. If we click on the stop motion menu, we can see that along the top here we have the frames per second. This typically might be much lower than you would normally use for video, uh, which is normally 25 or 30, but here in stop motion it's more likely you would be using about 10 frames per second. Next door is the duration you want the time 
uh, for the sequence to take. So if as you go up, you can see that you know if we set that to three, then three times ten is thirty frames per second. Next door to this, we have the shutter. If you have the camera set on ball mode, this will control how long the shutter stays open. Typically, you would only use it if you were using for long exposures a second or longer otherwise it's probably wiser just to let the camera take control of how long the shutter stays open and with that set we can we just turn that down a bit for example purposes to 10 frames so we're going to shoot 10 frames and we can just click now and we can see that our camera moves to the next frame and the counter comes down now it's a fairly rudimentary stop motion system uh, I may be persuaded at some point to make a connection into Dragon Frame if there's enough demand for it. But there's quite a few other things I want to add to the system before I get there. Uh, but this at least gives you the basics of uh, for stop motion. And I put it on board for a friend. So I hope you found something here of interest to you. If you want to see more, all the videos are on the channel on how to build all the parts of the kit. Uh, like and subscribe for new updates. And uh, see you again soon.